So you screened last night here in Toronto. Uh, how did that go? I heard it went well. It was great. It was a, a packed house and one of the large theaters, and um, it's just it's so satisfying to see the film with an audience and hear them laugh and sigh and you know respond. And I had the once in a lifetime experience of sitting next to President Nasheed and the First Lady as they watched the film for the first time. So it was a lot of fun. Was it what you were expecting, sir? Um, well, we haven't, I haven't seen the film before, and this was the first time I've seen it. Um, I think that was really far better than our expectations, and John's done an excellent job out of it. When he first approached you, what did you think? I mean, what were you expecting? Uh, were you, what, what did you think he was going to be asking of you, and what did it turn out to really be? Well, he was asking for a lot. He was asking to be with us all the time. Um, we felt that um, because we wanted to become as transparent as possible, uh, that this was an opportunity for us as well to have an extra pair of eyes to see um, what we were doing. Uh, but especially the work that we did for Copenhagen Summit, the climate change work, um, John's understood it, and the film has brought it out in very good structure. That has again given us a, a whole series of other possibilities to work with. Well, you're engaged in a campaign not only to change global warming and all of that, but to save your country. I mean, it's literally a, a race for survival. If we are unable to do something now, we will not be around, and, and that's the fact, and it's very real, and it's very, very difficult for us um, to uh, plan um, as a country to go forward when so much uncertainty is looming over us. So it's, uh, we have to find a solution for this, we have to find um, some manner of being able to live um, in the future. And also, it's not just us. What happens to the Maldives today is going to happen to you tomorrow. New York City? New York City is... is uh, and, you know, climate change is not just sea level rise. It's climate aberrations. And the winds are going to be stronger. The waves are going to be bigger. Summers may be probably longer and, and you know, there's going to be a whole series of very um, difficult changes uh, that the planet is going to go through. And so I think we should all be worried about it. It's not just the Maldives. Well, this brings up uh, several issues. Um, one I wanted to raise is, is, is it the Copenhagen um, part of the movie is so dramatic because you gave the speech of your life. Right? I mean, it had such an impact. It turned everything around. Talk about that whole thing. When um, we'd, we'd stayed awake for two nights, um, trying with the heads of states, um, trying to get a narrative, to get, get a, uh, uh, um, a document um, into the plenary, um, and then try and see if we could get enough votes or enough support for that document. Now, when the document was brought to the plenary, uh, there were countries really quite against it, and, and countries, Venezuela, Cuba, uh, they didn't want anything to do with it. They wanted to just dismiss it outrightly. And they played very vigorously to do that. So, uh, finally, uh, um, I, I pleaded against, uh, pleaded with them that, you know, this is not the United States asking Cuba. I, when, when Cuba and Venezuela started saying all these things, I went up to them and said, look, you know, it's me. This is, this is not, there is no conspiracy here. Uh, no one is trying to get against you, but uh, we're just trying to live. And please uh, let this go. And the Cuban foreign minister, after a while, left. And that gave me a signal to say, you know, okay, um, um, we might be able to move it. Uh, because they were, they were uh, getting a little bit accommodative. Um, so 
Yes, that was um, a plea, and, and uh, I remember that speech. It, was, it didn't come from any text. It, it, I just it came to. from your heart. In terms of a, you know, in terms of a film drama, you know, uh, it's interesting because you know, the climate change and uh, global warming. I think, in, in, especially in the U.S., is considered kind of a, a numbing, kind of boring, uh, you know, almost impossible topic to, to bring up. But when we, f when we heard, heard about what President Nasheed was saying on the topic, to us it seemed like the most exciting topic. You know, you have literally a ticking time bomb going off that's going to happen at the end of the film, just like a, you know, a hero in an action film is trying to you know, race across the country and across town and go through tunnels to you know, undo the bomb at the last second to, to keep the, you know, the world from blowing up. And that's essentially what we have, is we have a ticking time bomb. And President Nasheed and his people are trying to do whatever they can to defuse that, that bomb. And so Copenhagen is kind of like, uh, you know, like Jason Bourne has finally gotten to the place where he's figured out, you know, who all the players are. And he has just a few seconds left to convince somebody to not, I was thinking, you know, uh, Jimmy Stewart and Mr. Smith yeah, goes to yeah, Washington. Well, that's, it's kind of a similar thing, you know, a, a plea from the heart or, you know, or a, a few, you know, some kind of moment where, you know, uh, of kind of reality, where you know, there's like kind of changed history. I mean, they ended up voting for they, you they, because of you. <laughs> they ended up voting. Um, I think they um, realized that this was not something that they could outrightly reject. Um, at the balance, in the balance was huge stakes, very big stakes. Uh, the whole uh, um, viability of the UN system. Uh, the whole concept of international relations and international negotiations. And if we've come out from Copenhagen without a document, when all these heads of states have come together, that would have really been very, very, very bad. I guess what worries a lot of people is that even if that document went through, what kind of teeth does it really have in terms of countries behaving differently and doing different things? The, the document is not um, a legally binding document. Um, but I, I, in my mind, when leaders sit together and then they pledge and they say that this is what they intend to do, um, there is a coming together of minds. Um, so for me, that is an agreement. That is an understanding that they will have to stick to. And I am finding that a number of countries, you know, 100 odd countries have signed into the accord. And sooner or later, these things are going to stick. Uh, we have since then been able to bring in the features of the Copenhagen Accord to the UNFCCC process, and that, that happened in Cancun. Um, so in Cancun, I've, I asked ask them um, to see if we can bring them into this process without the accord hanging outside the framework. So the, the, the accord is now in the framework. I mean, one of the things that's, that's going on in the United States which is so disturbing is this whole idea, as you're suggesting, that people don't even take it seriously. They, the global warming is some kind of myth. Um, and it, is there a possibility, you think, that this film could be used as a wedge to raise consciousness? Just the way the uh, inconvenient truth did. Well, I, I, I really think that um, there is a message that will go across and uh, people will be receptive to what John has done. Uh, and I hope that people will realize the, the gravity of the issue and come to understand that this is real and that they have to act. Uh, the United States, the Western countries have acted in many different times, uh, very responsibly. Uh, uh, tobacco is, I think, one example. Uh, uh, we've legislated very draconian sometimes measures uh, against smoking. Um, so I think uh, it, it takes time, but the, the thing about climate change is you don't have that time. So there must be uh, an instant. Uh, uh, again, you know, I try to find similar um, moments in your history in, in, in European and North American history. When they entered the Second War, or as they entered the First War, they were very reluctant to do these things. And but one fine night, 
your leaders decided that they'll have to do this. Uh, um, it might be a shock to a, a lot of people that they've done it, but I think um, similar uh, um, incidents and, and similar things will probably happen. Now, when you uh, first approached him, what kind of tug of war did you have to go through in terms of giving him access and you know, following him around? He, you were you were with him night and day, it seemed. Well, we you know we we saw in President Nishida you know kind of uh, just a. A, a unique character in the climate debate. You know, he was a, the first democratically elected leader of the Maldives, and um, we thought he, you know, he's about to go through his first year in office, and and that year is going to also coincide with one of the more important years in the in the climate debate, which is the year preceding Copenhagen. So to us, it just seemed like a, kind of a natural way to really humanize uh, what seems to be almost impossible to humanize, which is the climate debate, because it seems so far away, and it seems so abstract. And it is so visible. You are there on the shore, you're showing Yeah, when everything. you see the Maldives, it just, you, it's gorgeous, and it's vulnerable, and it's fragile, and you just, and you just, there's something in your heart that just wants to protect that, and protect, obviously protect the people who live on, on those islands. So we, we just honestly came to the president and pitched him on the idea of doing something very unusual, which is to make a kind of an all-access documentary to a head of state. Um, it's unusual, but he's an unusual head of state. You know, he, I think it is. Well, it was, it was um, many, many instances and many, many times it's a huge challenge to have someone watching over you all the time. Um, however much um, you think that you can show everything. But it's, it, it, it gets sometimes um, nagging and bothering. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but we always, um, uh, uh, maybe two, three, four months into the filming, um, gradually I was getting a little bit comfortable because the cameras were dissolving um, and, and we were just going through usual stuff. Uh, but I think uh, it helped. It helped, uh, it helped for us also to be mindful of what we are doing uh, and to do the right. Because there are but you have a PR campaign too. I mean, there is a there is a kind of marketing effort to, to raise consciousness. Well, we don't have the means. Um, you know, our means are very very modest. Um, we don't have the means to to run a publicity um, campaign. It's going to cost millions and millions of dollars. So the best we could do is is to see if others are interested in it. And um, John was a godsend, and uh, he came along, and he wanted to do it. So we gave him all the access. Uh, my attorney general, th three, four months down the line, was saying that uh, she won't be able to defend us with all this footage. So I thought, when were they ever able to defend us? <laughs> uh, uh, you know, you do. The only time you can be defended, or, or the only people that can defend you, are really actually your own not institutions. When is the likelihood of distribution? Where are you on that? Um, well, the, we've had a, just to talk about Godsend, we've had kind of a, a, a dream come true. We've you know played the film at Telluride and then now at Toronto, which is a great kind of one-two punch for a, a documentary like this. And we've had really remarkable audience response and uh, we have interest from um, theatrical distribution companies in the U.S. So. We're confident now that the film will be released um, sometime, you know, later this year, and um, be eligible for um, Academy consideration. Hopefully, it'll be eligible for ca Academy consideration, and um, more importantly, make its way around the country and make its way around the world in theaters, and then um, subsequently on television. So we're kind of we're just at the beginning. We're excited to tell the story, and you know what you see in the story is, um, um, I think what people might be surprised about is that it. It's a, it's a movie, it's a story of a, of, a, of, a, of a kind of a man on a mission kind of thing. Like you said, you know, Mr. Smith goes to Washington and it's not a lecture and it's not, um, it's almost as if you could choose kind of a, an underdog kind of story and have the challenge be anything. It happens to be kind of this apocalyptic, you know, fight against, um, you know, climate change. But it's a, it's a, I think it's a dramatic story that anybody can identify with and I think uh, Americans respond to that kind of thing. It's you know it's been shown in the past that Americans respond to great stories, and so hopefully this will be in that category. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, thank you very much.